Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to teach you guys about the importance of Pinterest marketing when trying to grow traffic to your blog. I have a very special guest in today's video. Her name is Christina Day. She is a Pinterest marketing manager and strategist and she's going to come on today and teach you guys the importance of using Pinterest to generate traffic to your blog and some tips that she shares with her clients on how to grow your Pinterest account. And she's going to talk to you guys about the importance of keyword research for Pinterest and search engine optimization. Pinterest is not a social media network, it's more of a search engine and Christina is going to teach you all the tips that she shares with her clients so that you guys too can grow traffic to your blog from Pinterest. So let's meet Christina. Hi everybody, my name is Christina Zay and I'm a Pinterest manager and strategist. I work uh, specifically with coaches in uh, spirituality and health and wellness area, and I help them to get their content that they're already creating on Pinterest and extend it to Pinterest, reach new people, and drive back traffic to their businesses. I think the biggest mistake, and I don't know if you agree, is that some people think Pinterest is like a social media network rather than a search engine. So could you talk us through that? 100%. Um, and there's a lot of confusion around it is because everywhere where you go, like even in the analytics, Pinterest is under socials. So the biggest difference I will say is that you have to switch your thinking because Pinterest, think about Pinterest, Google, but with images. Everyone is so used to pump content on Instagram, pump content on Facebook, because the lot shelf life on those platforms, you post something, it's good if it's, you know, bringing you clicks one day after usually a couple of hours. With Pinterest, because it's all SEO, same as YouTube, same as Google, if you do it right, it will be months and months that your single link, single pin will be bringing you clicks after. Pinterest is not social, it's search, searchable. Everything is searching. When people are creating pins, what advice would you give to them? What things do they need to remember when they're creating a pin that is going to last a few months? My biggest piece of advice will be when you're getting on Pinterest, don't start pinning. And by that, I mean, you have to um, go and do a keyword research and lay strong foundation for your house because it doesn't matter how much you pin, what you pin, where you pin, if people are not able to find it, it never will bring a clicks. And for people to be able to find it, this is why you first have to know what are your main keywords in business, go on Pinterest and look, what are people searching for those terms? If they are, maybe they're slightly different on Pinterest and you have to create your keyword strategy and use that throughout your profile and your about in your um, boards, board descriptions, pin descriptions. And only when you have created this, when you're creating pin, you have to make sure that the keywords you're targeting are in your title, in your pin description, literally on your pin design, and that also every single pin is linking somewhere. You want to create like overall keyword strategy first, for example, let's say you're uh, travel, right? Your main keywords will be travel and uh, travel hacks or digital nomad. So those are the main two keywords you're targeting in every single description. But when you're creating, you also want to add unique to the blog post, you know? So if you're writing a blog that is about, let's say Bali, Bali is not the only location you're going to, when you're creating a pen in the description you will write travel blogger the dig digital nomad and then bali travel hacks blah 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 so per blog there are unique keywords right but on pinterest there are some keywords that you will add no matter what so description is 500 characters and the best practice to use all of them all the 500 so when you're creating a new pen i would go and type kind of the title, the topic of the pen, and to Pinterest search engine. And have a look what people are searching for. Okay, based on that, I will try to make as logical sentence as possible. And then when I cannot make any more logical sentence, at the end, I will just put the 
keywords I'm targeting, travel uh, blogger, digital nomad, yada, yada, yada. It's like a hashtags on Instagram, okay. right? And people don't read all of those 500 char- characters. So you just bunk them in and it helps with your searchability. Pinterest is also, maybe last year, uh, they started introducing heavily video pins. Oh, so something, you know, like DIY or craft or even cooking, like it's like some of the video pins will even autoplay. So they're really pushing on that. Mm-hmm. And I see that algorithm favors those people. Like even with your YouTube videos, Janet, you could create one piece of YouTube video. You link it as video on Pinterest. Then you also can create an embed it on your blog and create a blog from it and link it on Pinterest from multiple, you know, angles. How important are group boards? Because I keep hearing different stories. Like you have to have join 20 or 30 different group boards. And I, some oh. people recently are saying, actually, no, you don't. When people had no idea how Pinterest actually works for business, group boards were popular. Uh, but now when people understand more and more, hey, it's actually all about keywords. Um, group boards definitely can help you, but if you join group boards, don't join boards that that are pins about everything, blah, 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 because how do you know that people who follow that board are even interested in your stuff and the people who contribute to that board, that their followers, in case they repin it, that their followers are interested in it. You have got to be really specific when you're joining group boards. Look what quality um, pins are they are there. Are you able to repin something from that board to your board? And again, look at the titles. Are the keywords optimized? Look at their board descriptions because there's no point of just yeah, joining the board that doesn't is not searchable. I'm, to be honest, not so big on Google boards. If I join something where I contribute, I first go to Talent Tribes. And again, you really want to make sure that there are niche related so when i feel like i'm enough with the tribe then i will start to look to group boards only and maybe i join one or two max a month but i'm still focusing mainly on creating new boards of my own and making sure they're really keyword optimized that brings me to tailwind can you talk us through tailwind briefly yeah so talent is a official pinterest partner it's official scheduling tool that you're allowed to use and honestly, I don't, I can't imagine doing Pinterest without Tailwind because every day you have to be pinning 10 to 15 times a day. So it's very different to Instagram or Facebook. So when I say 10, 15 pins a day, it's not that you have to be pinning all of it, your own as Instagram or Facebook. It's the mixture of your pins and pins from somebody else. But what is important that you don't pin, you sit down and bump. 15 pins go out. No, every pin goes specific like 1137 or 4, 427, you know, that's where talent comes in because you humanly have no idea when your ideal client is on Pinterest, but talent pulls that information from Pinterest. And also if it's in the middle of the night, you don't have to get up <laughs> and, you know, pin it. So, and literally you will sit down maybe once a month or couple times of a month, you pre-batch it, you schedule everything, you make sure that your pins are going to the related boards, and you forget about it. With all of my clients, when we just start, I start with a ratio of 80-20, where 80% is from somebody else, 20% is their content. But as you are scaling, I want you to start, um, and I usually do that as well, um, bumping down the somebody else's content and upping your content. So some people even go 100 pins of their own, um, but I will not do that in the beginning because by even repinning somebody else's content who is related in your niche, you're telling Pinterest algorithm, hey, I'm an expert in travel, so show me to people, show my account to people who are searching for travel. Do you have any success stories, either your own or anyone else's that you could share? I want to get something out there is that Pinterest is so unique. Even if you are in the same niche with somebody, your target audience is same. The success and the strategy that will work for you will be highly unique. 
so what is working for me might not work for somebody else. So one of my clients, uh, he was actually a weightlifting personal trainer for men. And uh, when we just started wor uh, working together, so I did the setup, you know, did the keyword research and so on. And when we got into our first month of management, we brought in, I, I can't, um, don't remember, was it 1,200 uh, clicks or 1,500 clicks in first month? And one pin, which was how to master pull-ups or something like that, brought him around 700 or 800 clicks in his first month. And, you know, that br breaks all the stereotypes about Pinterest is just for moms or, you know, he was a weightlifter for men. It can go wild so quickly, not to discourage anyone. So if you're starting and you're not seeing this huge number, it's okay. It's totally fine. You know, Pinterest is a long-term game. And the more content you're putting out there, the more content is circulating through a search engine. And you never know who maybe two years after will go and find your pin, pin it somewhere, and it goes viral again. Where do you design your pins or where do you recommend people to design their pins? If you're just starting out, I would not, you know, overwhelm yourself with Photoshop or anything unless you have Photoshop and you're, you know, a designer already. I just use Canva and actually, uh, to be honest, Canva like is upgrading and upgrading so much. Like you can even create video pins in Canva now. Could you give us a summary of what your advice is for newbies? Like what should they be focusing on if they're just getting started? So when you're just starting with Pinterest, make sure you have your keywords in place. Uh, your, all of your profile is optimized, all of your boards, board descriptions are optimized so that in future when you pin, people are able to find you. Um, because if you don't have that, uh, people won't be able to find you. Don't worry about if people are not um, socializing or commenting with you, Pinterest is not social media. And also don't be afraid seeing zeros. Sometimes you pin and there's no engagement, but then you repin it to a different blog, different time. That's why, again, use styling is really important and it goes viral. SEO, patience, and testing and adjusting are my main key points. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me today. Maybe you could tell people where they can find you if they, I don't know, if they want to hire your services or if they want to look you up on social media. So I do done for you services and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you, you know, in case you want to do it yourself. So you can go christinaday.co, so .co. that's my website and I have freebie, uh, I have mini course as well and the blog and otherwise you can reach out to me on my, my Instagram, which is pin with Christina. And yeah, just shoot me a DM if you have any question, I'm always happy to help. So much great information there from Christina. So thank you so much, Christina, for coming on today and chatting with me. If you have any specific questions about Pinterest, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave them below. As I do plan to make a few more Pinterest videos, I'm gonna do some interviews with bloggers who they say that Pinterest accounts for a huge proportion of their traffic. So I'm going to get them on and talk to them and see what is their strategy and how do they get so much traffic for Pinterest so that hopefully you guys can replicate their strategy and get some traffic from Pinterest as well. So yeah, if you do have any questions, let me know below. Thank you again for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing below. Thanks for watching and let's grow our social media together.